And we're back. Or I'm back, I should say. This is Juliana, and I'm meandering with we're doing it wrong. All by my lonesome on the uh, Agatha Christie's ABC Murders. Um, so, where I left off was in the crime scene, and uh, we've pretty much covered everything that can be done at the crime scene. So, we're going to head on over on to Combside, which I think. I'm guessing it's the actual, like, house. So. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. I find it hard to digest. There is something elegant about her. She has good taste, except perhaps in her choice of jewelry. Please excuse me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. Hmm. Oops, I guess I don't get to talk to her. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to question him. My brother's wife is gravely ill. You will probably want to question her, but I fear that it won't be possible today. Of course. I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. Everybody, including you? Naturally. What were you doing last night? After dinner, I went to my bedroom. At 11 in the evening, the telephone rang. It was the police. I went to look for my brother. Was it your favorite novel? The Railway Children by Edith Nesbitt. I know it's a children's book, but it's enthralling. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. <gasps> Miss Clark! Oh, Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair. I have to help Miss Grey get her up. Hastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. But, Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... I take full responsibility. All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. Traditional Chinese map. Facsimile. South is on the top of the map. Hmm. There are some very valuable objects here. I see. Compass, point to the south. Bronze and magnetite. Han Dynasty, circa... 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong, 1935. Hmm. 
They have some. Sorry. Ah, uh, let's we'll just try and keep it all to the same area. A dragon. A turtle. A tiger. A crane. A crane, interesting. It is an emperor. His place at the center of the table is probably symbolic. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. Comside's private collection, purchases since 1920. Nice. The catalog for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. It's locked. <laughs> Sir Carmichael's collection. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. All right, and all right, over here we go. I think that should be everything in the room, other than leaving. But you know, we don't need to do that. Okay, so, let's see. Turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. I think we have to. All right, let's see. Uh, well, we don't need to do that. We need to. All right, and all of them had the white thing towards the dragon, or yeah, towards the emperor dragon um, all right um, okay so that means the right color. No, not quite the right color. Uh, okay, let's see. The position of each motif resembles that of those on the table. Yes. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. Ernest Logan, 
MD Brighton Cancer Institute 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comsite Churston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. Well, that sucks. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case. So I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Your sincerely, Ernest Logan. Jeez. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Hmm. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. This porcelain is remarkable. Is it old? It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait, let me find the reference. She appears to be very flustered. She is unable to hide her emotion, and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here? Teapot with Black Dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. It is a rare piece with unusual colors. Oh, geez, Perot. You have a good knowledge of art history. Acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection and choose his new acquisitions. And sometimes, he used to give you a piece as a gift. Is that right? A gift? What do you mean? I am referring to your brooch. This old brooch? Mademoiselle, you know perfectly well. I am talking about the magnificent brooch you were wearing earlier. Yes, you're right. Sir Carmichael did give it to me. He valued my work. How could I refuse? He would have been offended. Why have you taken it off? I don't understand, Mr. Poirot. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. What were you doing yesterday evening at the time of the murder? I was sleeping. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with some lanterns and they found the body. Am I right thinking that something is going on between you and Franklin? How dare you ask me such a question? <clears throat> Mademoiselle, it is difficult to hide things from me. He kissed you earlier, did he not? My goodness, with Sir Carmichael's death, I was feeling so awful, so worried. I was unable to resist. I am not judging you, Mademoiselle.
Miss Gray, if I may be so bold, please do not take offense. My friend has rather unusual methods, but all he wants is to find the murderer. Yes, I understand. I must rest. Please excuse me. Earlier, you asked me to watch the living room door for you. I don't wish to be indiscreet, but sometimes a gentleman stumbles upon a secret without intending to. That is sometimes the case. And I saw Franklin Clark kissing Miss Gray at the foot of the stairs. Do you think this is a common occurrence? No, I saw emotion, intensity. I think it was their first kiss. Well done, mon ami. Well spotted. However, I don't think I completely understand this business. Why did Sir Carmichael not defend himself? He appeared to have been active and strong. The murderer did not give him a chance. Let us try and reconstruct the scene. Yeah, reconstruction. Um, so I will end it right after this. Uh, so yay. Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. Let's see, attack from the left. That would pull the man to his right and put him where we need him to go. Or right from the right. And I guess either would work. The killer leaves his hiding place on the right hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his spray and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Monsha Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Hmm. Well then. Oh, of course, there's cinematic after this, of course. Oh, just a minute, I'm getting dressed. Guess that's not concerning, the fact that he's got blood all over his shirt. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes. Indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer. Imagine that. Mr. Kirst, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies. My throat is burning and my head feels heavy. Hmm. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. Well... That's not good. Um... Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me, Hastings. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ouch! Ah, is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. I will say that is one way to burn your friend. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. All right, well, I'm gonna cut this off here and now, and uh, I will see you in the next video, and we will start fresh, if you would. Anyway, um, thumbs up if you like, thumbs down if you don't. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Please, if you want something new, different, 
uh, if you like what you're saying, something, comment. We like that. It, it helps us improve. Uh, helps us keep doing what you like to see. Anyway, uh, I will see you next time. Mr. Hercule Poirot, you fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mysteries that are too difficult for our poor big head British police? Let us see, Mr. Clever Poirot, just how clever you can be. Perhaps you'll find this nut too hard to crack. Card for Endover on the 21st of the month. <laughs>